Hi guys, and welcome to Trucking Along with Kiersey. That's me, your positive voice in trucking. And today, I have some juicy info about Prime Inc.'s flatbed division. Prime Inc., as of May 6th, has put a cap on the number of company flatbed drivers. So anybody coming into Prime Inc. after May 6th, if they want to be a company driver, they will not be able to go solo on a company truck in the flatbed division until there is an opening available, which means they could stay on the trainer's truck and continue to team. They could do that either in the training mode or they could upgrade and basically they'd just be team drivers. They're no longer in training, but they're team drivers with that original trainer. Um, or it's also possible that they could team on another truck if they find a company driver on the flatbed division that they're willing that who wants to team then that's one possibility also what i don't like about this is typical prime they're not very good at communication i've said that a few times i feel that they did that with these cameras that are out um but the past few years, it's not just Prime. Trucking in general has pushed team, 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 team. The, the trucking industry is kind of on that down. And we're hoping it's going to level out soon, right? But here's another issue. Are the companies trying to team in order to compete with the new generation of automated trucks? So... Comment down below. Let me know what you think about autonomous trucks. Do you think that um, it's something that we're going to have to deal with? Do you think it's something that's going to be in the near future? Do you think it's expectations that are far in the distance, but it's just not going to happen anytime soon? Are you worried? Or do you just think that they're going to put it out? then the thing's going to run somebody over. There's going to be so many lawsuits that it's going to put the company out of business and we're all going to be back on the road again. CNBC.com just published an article about Aurora's, it says, Inside Aurora's Autonomous Trucking Operation in Texas. Trucking is an integral part of the economy representing over 70% of freight moved in the U.S. Yet it is dogged by shorter driver shortages Nope, 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 nope. Too many drivers on the road. Too many drivers. That driver shortage thing, that's that's a bunch of bunk. Sorry. Safety issues and supply chain supply change challenges. Pittsburgh-based Aurora Innovations is hoping to solve these problems and more by bringing self-driving technology to trucks. Today, if you want to take strawberries from California to Dallas, it takes three days. With Aurora Driver, You'll be able to do that in about 24 hours, says the co-founder of Aurora. You can do that with a team truck. Problem is, you need two people. So right now, even though they're claiming these are autonomous trucks, there's still a safety driver in control of these trucks. So there's been a few comments today in my text where people were saying that they think that the AI that they're putting in all of our cameras are us teaching the systems how to drive better. You know, we're teaching the systems, the roads and the maps and where the stop signs are and that kind of thing. And that technology may be used in the new trucks for them to drive themselves. Because let's face it, we're going to be given feedback on all these things, right? So I don't know how many of you out there have one of the newer trucks, but... And I don't, I haven't suffered with this, but there are a lot of reports, especially in the 2024 Cascadias, that you'll be driving along and the technology in that truck reads the speed limit signs. Now, I just had this in the rental car that I had. The, the car would not allow me to accelerate beyond the speed limit. I was trying to just pass somebody and I couldn't do it because I couldn't, I couldn't, and I actually thought there was something wrong with the transmission. I was like, who? This is terrible car. I would never buy this. And it's actually the 
AI in the car keeping me from accelerating. Well, in the 2024 Cascadias, you could be driving along on the interstate and there's an off-ramp that you are not taking. But if that camera sees that sign for that off-ramp and it's 40 miles per hour, that truck just slows your butt down to that 40 miles per hour in the middle of the interstate, whose minimum speed might be 40 miles per hour or 45, or like Oklahoma, might be 55 miles per hour minimum speed on the turnpike. So those trucks that are supposed to be safer could actually put you in a more dangerous situation. While other autonomous trucking companies such as Starsky Robotics, Embark, and True Simple have folded or scaled back efforts in the U.S., Aurora is moving ahead and is now delivering loads for customers such as Uber Freight, FedEx, Schneider, and Werner. So is this why Prime and a lot of the other companies are pushing teams? Because they need to try to compete with the influx of the autonomous trucks that we may be dealing with, we may be competing with soon. Think about it. Our training went from 30,000 miles to 50,000 miles. And as a team trainer, I can tell you that is a long time. I don't want to do TNT team training anymore. That's too long, okay? I train my students three weeks, four weeks tops. They're able to go out on their own and run their trucks and just call me when they need assistance. I don't need to train them for months and months. And with the freight the way it is, um, you know, you're giving team trucks solo loads. So the solo drivers aren't getting as many loads. They're not getting as many miles. That's not cool. But yet we have media saying that there's a trucking shortage, a driver shortage. No, there's not. We don't want any new people. <laughs> what we need is safe drivers. Okay? We need safe drivers. I will agree that we have a lot of people that came in that aren't necessarily safe. I think it's absolutely crazy that as a CDL instructor, I'm not teaching people how to drive the truck. I was teaching people how to drive. I shouldn't need to tell you what a yield sign means. I shouldn't need to tell you, you know, that that sign says, you know, left yields on blinking arrow or left yields on green. You should know that. You should be able to read. I shouldn't have to explain that. It's one thing to explain the operation of the vehicle and how far you have to pull up and turn and backing. That's my job. But I shouldn't have to tell you that running a red light is bad. I shouldn't have to tell you that speeding is bad. You know, we had one person here, a YouTuber, who actually said that he didn't know that going 80 miles per hour downhill was a bad thing. That nobody at Prime told him that because, and if they did, they overloaded him with so much information and knowledge he could not, he could not comprehend. Funny thing was, he had no problem comprehending all these calculations on YouTube, did he? Mm -mm. Nope. So, a lot of people put their priorities in the wrong place. If you're going to come out here, be serious about being out here. This is an 80,000 pound killing machine. That's what it is. Then, if you're not serious about this, and you just think this is going to be a travel adventure, then we don't want you here. Sorry, but in the, I worked in the post office in 1996 and there were three different processing centers where the post office actually moved out thousands of employees into these, out of these buildings that they created to be um, lights out facilities, meaning they didn't need to have lights on because it was all robots. The only people that worked in the buildings were mechanics and shortly after that they realized that the robots can't do the job of a person. All this technology that we have, that they keep inserting, even the AI cameras that we're getting, you're vaping or smoking. I don't know, I shouldn't be smoking like that, right? <laughs> I don't smoke. But you're smoking and you're vaping and all of a sudden the camera thinks it's a cell phone. 
how good are these cameras? How good is the technology in the truck that's going to be driving a massive amount of weight? How good are they going to be? I personally, after seeing the robots at the post office, and, you know, years and years later, they still couldn't get it right. We had a million dollar robot sitting in the corner of the of the post office I worked at, at the postal uh, processing center that I worked at, because nobody even thought about the fact that the doors between the building and the dock where the loading trucks are, nobody thought that, to measure the robot to see if it could get through the door. So the robot was stuck inside the building and couldn't go out to the docks. These are the engineers that we're relying on to provide this type of technology. Mm, no. <laughs> you know, so some drivers, and there were like three of them that saw this video today, and pretty much the consensus is that they think that by 2030 and 2035 that we'll be surrounded by autonomous trucks. Comment down below and let me know what you think. <laughs> and I hope to see you out here truck, truck, trucking along. Bye.